So I guess now's the time to say goodbye, but we need the piano to actually sing it, so I don't think we'll attempt that. Have you ever heard it? You no, need somebody no, no. to do a falsetto no, to sing no, it. No. That's not me. Um, Sandy, you first. Thank you. <laughs> right, so we've been running Rhizos for about four years, and that's our last meeting. And uh, when we were writing the proposals, what we wanted to do was to try to bring people together. Um, and around the themes of performance, interactive storytelling. And, and one of the reasons we wanted to do this was that we were working in, in the interactive storytelling kind of field, but it was, it was a computer science dominated kind of uh, area. And um, we wanted to challenge the common ideas that we just put forward. So that's why we wanted to try to do something different, get different perspectives. Um, so the idea of, of writers was to try to get people who potentially never met, never meet, and try to bring them all together and exchange and, and do things and talk about those things. So in the four years, we've done something that I was never expected to do. Uh, we ended up, we had a, a live action role play where we were re recreating 1789 in France, uh, revolution. Uh, we filmed ducks on the pond in York in 3D. <laughs> A kind of things. We work on some comics. We've uh, we've done a lot of very different things, and I think personally, I've learned quite a lot through all those different things. I've learned a lot about technology, but I've also learned a lot about ways of approaching uh, the world and the creative world, and, and ways of looking into it. And, and to me, that's been really, really good. We've been very careful to document everything we could, so all the resources are on the website so that um, other people can benefit from it. Now we want to do something else, and we want to move forward. So the question is how we're going to do it. And that's, that's all that we are, but it's been a great adventure for me. I think for both of us. So we have over 130 members on the website, and we've involved more people than that. Um, the highlights, some of the ones Sandy mentioned. I particularly enjoyed doing a workshop for the general public at the Scottish Storytelling Centre with some story generation software where we had 20 people, including two kids who turned up. It was intended for adults, um, but the kids were okay. And in fact, they seemed to be better at the computer stuff than their parents. <laughs> they helped their parents to, uh, to master it. Um, so we've done everything from very much uh, public-facing stuff to getting experts to address specialist topics, I missed a lot of the LARP, unfortunately, but that sounds like it was a real ball. Um, and the summer school, the, the stuff I attended in the summer school certainly was too. So Sammy's raised the key question is what we're going to do next. And I don't mean we as in me and him. Yeah? As for me and him, I'm carrying on moving towards retirement <laughs> gradually. And Sandy's going to the high school school of art to do new stuff. So that's what we're doing personally. But we have a network of people here now, people who've met each other who wouldn't have met each other apart from this. And what are we going to do next? So one thing we could do is apply for another network. Okay? That seems to me to be worth doing. It would have to be different from riders. In other words, its manifesto would have to be different. It probably should be led by somebody, not Harriet Watt, but some other organisation. And it would have to focus differently from the way we focused ours. If someone did that um, and wrote it well, and in particular got lots of letters of support, we got, I think, 69 letters of support or something when we originally put it in, and that really swung it. We worked terribly hard at getting letters of support from all kinds of people. Uh, people will do letters of support if you ask them nicely for a network, just on the off chance they might like to be in it. Uh, then your chances of getting funded are good because these are not very expensive things to run. So we had, what, 110k... I think, something like that, a lot of which we spent on, eventually on the indispensable Vivian, um, who really held it together when us scatty academics were too busy keeping multiple balls in the air to focus on doing what we should have been doing in relation to the network. Um, we should have arrived with bouquet flowers for Vivian, uh, to be honest. I'll get on point. At least, but uh, <laughs> not a problem of whiskey to, to forget all the uh, messing around that we've managed to do over the period in our academic way. So think about this, guys. Yes? If someone wants to start writing a network proposal, we've done one and we can help. Um, I thought that there were examples in this last meeting of ours of ways in which you could slant such a network. 
You could apply for one to ESRC, for instance, um, and have people who are not techies running it. I think that's perfectly possible, looking at the role that storytelling plays in bringing people together and including disadvantaged groups and all the rest of it. You would then need somebody from the social sciences to run it, of course, if you want to do that. Uh, you could try and get AHRC to do it. I'm not sure if they have the necessary funding, but you could, in which case Samarty people should run it. Yeah? But it is possible to do this. We could do it if people want to do it. But it relies on somebody having the time and the necessary oomph to actually sit down and write the damn thing and put it in. We didn't have any trouble getting this funded. We worked quite hard at writing it. But in fact, it got funded without any real difficulty, having, having done that. So yeah, think about that. Think about that. Another network, useful thing. There are even EU sources of funding, and though they're a bit harder, there are things called coordinating actions, which essentially do the kind of thing this has been doing. And it's a much larger scale, because you have to recruit loads of people from different countries in something like that. But so, you know, even that's not impossible either. There was a narrative network called IRIS. And they did manage to get funding at some point, so that can be done as well. So, you know, think about it. We could carry on meeting, having joint activities, funding novel things that people want to do. Don't forget the website. It's going to be there. It's going to continue. Part of the legacy you have to uh, commit to. And the book is in continuing preparation. A small group of us are writing Writers, the book, which is intended to be an, an untypical book in the sense that it's a book about stories containing stories. So it's about narrative technology and other narrative things, but written in the form of different stories. So, academic fiction. Yeah, academic fiction. <laughs> Unlike the things we write in our proposals, which of course are not academic fiction at all. <laughs> you heard it here first. Okay, so I don't think there's anything else you want to say, except there will be a visit to a nearby pub. If anyone wants, if to, anyone wants to accompany Sandy, I'm going to go off home. And go for a drink. So anyone and wants to come. Okay. Yeah? Good. That's there is a drink. visit to, to a nearby pub. Okay, so please do go to that and please stay in touch. Thank you. Thank you very much.